This evening, I'm hoping to cover several topics uh, of interest to this audience. Um, we'll go over a definition of osteoporosis. We'll discuss who should be thinking about their bone health and um, tested and screened for it. We'll discuss ways, um, both lifestyle and medication, that we can uh, use to improve our bone strength and prevent fractures. Um, and then we'll talk about, uh, finally, the medical options for treatment of osteoporosis um, and um, some common concerns about safety. So osteoporosis is a very common disease. Half of all women and at least a quarter of all men will experience a fracture due to osteoporosis sometime in their lifetime. The most uh, sort of shocking thing about hip fractures that occur in the U.S. is that the mortality within one year is uh, very high. Um, almost one in four individuals will die within a year of having a hip fracture, not necessarily because of the fracture itself, but because of some of the complications that happen afterwards. All right, so now let's talk about who should be tested or screened for osteoporosis and how can we do that? So there are a number of risk factors that are associated with more rapid bone loss. Of course, age is one of them. We are all losing bone as we age. Um, peak bone mass actually occurs in your late 20s and early 30s. After that, there is a steady decline. Glucocorticoid therapy and other medications, these are um, including medications that we call steroids. Um, they can be uh, wonderful for reducing inflammation and treating diseases of uh, inflammatory different conditions but they can cause accelerated bone loss. Family history matters, particularly if you've had a parent who has had a hip fracture. In medicine, we um, often tell individuals that being overweight is a risk for various health conditions, but in the case of osteoporosis, it's the opposite, that there seems to be an increased fracture risk with low body weight. Other things that raise your risk of fracture include use of tobacco and smoking, excessive alcohol intake, um, more than two drinks a day for women or three drinks per day for men, inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, um, and then finally secondary osteoporosis refers to a large number of conditions, diseases, and medications that can cause bone loss. Why do we need to identify risk factors? Because it turns out that if you look at all the hip fractures, 50% of them happen in only 16% of the population. And these are often, again, patients who've had a prior fracture or who have other risk factors. Um, and the goal here is to try to identify those individuals who are at higher risk so that we can um, target therapies to increase bone mass and lower the risk of fracture. So the gold standard here in the US for screening for fracture risk is um, to assess a bone density. Um, and it's uh, done by something called a DEXA scan. So who should have a bone density test? Well, you know, lots of professional organizations have come up with consensus guidelines, and it's generally agreed upon that women who are age 65 and older should have a screening bone density scan. It's generally agreed upon that men should also have screening bone density scans, but the exact age is a little bit debatable. So some societies say age 70, some say 75. Um, again, men fracture at an uh, older age than women. Um, if you're younger than 65, um, over the age of 50, and have significant risk factors, including the ones that we reviewed on the previous slide, then those individuals might also be good candidates for a bone density test. Um, anyone who's had a fragility fracture or low trauma fracture after the age of 50. And then finally, if you're uh, taking a medication or diagnosed with other conditions like rheumatoid arthritis that are known to be associated with bone loss, um, it's important to speak with your doctor about whether you should have a bone density test. So the most common way to assess bone density is something called a DEXA scan. This is our scanner here at Stanford Hospital, along with one of our wonderful radiation um, radiology technicians. Um, it's a non-invasive, non-painful test. You simply lie down on this bed. This arm rotates around. All right, once we've identified that um, you have a risk of fracture or you're just wondering how you can be proactive in improving your bone health, there are a number of things that we can all do. So these are the Surgeon General's recommendations for optimizing bone health um, from a lifestyle perspective. 
So um, you can get adequate calcium and vitamin D, and we'll talk about this on the next few slides. Um, exercise is wonderful for many benefits, including um, strengthening your bones. You can reduce your risk of falls. So this means things like wearing um, shoes that are you know, not, uh, not likely to trip, um, making sure that in your house, if you have um, you know, throw rugs, that they're tacked down securely on the floor. It's important to maintain a healthy weight. Um, and again, not too low because that does raise your risk of fracture. Um, don't smoke or cut back if you do limit alcohol use. Um, and finally, if you're taking medication, or you have other conditions that might be associated with bone loss, do speak to your doctor about um, your risk. All right, so let's talk about how much calcium we need. Um, the goal is generally around 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams per day. You can get this through dietary sources, and the easiest way to remember that is um, dairy products are a wonderful source of calcium. At the same time as taking calcium, you also need enough vitamin D. Vitamin D is what helps your intestine to absorb the calcium. And so the goal here is roughly in the range of 800 to 1,000 international units a day of vitamin D. So the recommendations are 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous activity a week. Comes with all sorts of benefits beyond the bones. For bones specifically, it's really helpful to have strength training two to three times a week. All right, so now we've talked about the things that you can do lifestyle-wise to optimize your bone health, but sometimes that's not enough. So sometimes you have either a history of fracture or you have a low bone mineral density on a DEXA scan, and we really need to think about other um, interventions like medications. And finally, I wanna take a few minutes to discuss something that many patients come to me with concerns about, which is are osteoporosis medications safe? So in particular with osteoporosis medications, there are rare, very rare side effects that can affect um, the oral cavity called osteonecrosis of the jaw. The rare side effects that many people are concerned about are osteonecrosis of the jaw and atypical fracture. Um, and this graph makes the point that they are indeed rare. Um, and in fact, it's a little hard to see, but they're plotted for um, numbers of years of treatment. So five years versus 10. And really they don't become detectable until patients have been treated for more than eight to 10 years. And so this has led to the current guidelines, which say that for most individuals at moderate risk of fracture, we can treat for five years and then give a drug holiday. And this allows us to very safely use these medications. And so with that, I want to summarize again, uh, take home messages, which are, um, I, I hope I've, um, made some progress in convincing you that fractures uh, due to osteoporosis are indeed a serious public health issue, um, but often are preventable. That your fracture risk does depend on a number of factors. The most important are age and whether you've had previous uh, fractures and bone density, but other things like your height and weight, family history, other medications, alcohol use, smoking all have an impact. Lifestyle changes are very important. They can definitely slow down the rate of bone loss. They're not often enough to completely reverse somebody who has osteoporosis, but they still remain very important. And when used properly, osteoporosis medications are very safe and effective.